Konnichiwa, Patrick Oyama here at All Day I Eat Like a Shark, where I share my Japanese recipes once a week showing you how to make Japanese food. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing a few of my tips for taking the train uh, in Japan. And if this is your first time here, consider subscribing for more videos like this one. So the first tip is going to be to get a JR rail pass. And depending on where it is that you're going to be going, you may want a regionally specific rail pass or you may want one that you can use throughout the country. So they come in, I believe you can buy them in increments of anywhere from 3, 5, or 7 to 21 day uh, time frames. And basically that gives you uh, unlimited uh, usage of the uh, JR lines, which run all over the country and all throughout the major cities. So if you wanted to take the bullet train, the Shinkansen, which is the bullet train, might be a little bit more convenient than going to and from the airport because a lot of the uh, train stations connect with local trains so you can get around to wherever it is, your hotel, your Airbnb, um, your homestay and uh, do so easily without worrying about going through airport security transfers and so on if you do get the JR rail pass is that uh, you do need to buy it ahead of time so you have to have somewhat of an idea of how long you're gonna be staying in the country and where you're gonna be going uh, you do need to uh, exchange it once you arrive in Japan to get the official rail pass so first you get the voucher and then you get the actual pass they stamp it and then when you redeem your and when you redeem your voucher for the actual rail pass if you don't have a plan already, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's not a big deal, but if you do have an idea of where it is that you're gonna be going, if you have a set itinerary, what you can do is uh, book or reserve your Shinkansen tickets. So there's reserve seating and there's unreserve seating on these bullet trains, the Shinkansen. Recommend, especially if you're gonna be traveling during a festival or a holiday period, uh, the reserve seats will get booked up uh, quite quickly. So if you know you're gonna be somewhere, then go ahead and make that reservation. You can always change it, you're not held to it. Or you might be stuck in uh, unreserved seating and you might have to split up your group if you're traveling and you know with your family or a large group you might you guys might need to split up so keep that in mind even though the jrl pass is good for getting around uh, between large cities in japan it may not necessarily be the best thing for within cities so so within cities there are a lot of privately owned companies that are not jr uh, as well as bus lines so trains and buses so the private lines might help to uh, save you some time uh, with fewer connections for example getting you more getting you faster to your destination with fewer connections and be more convenient in terms of more uh, locations that are available, more stations that are available. And if you're gonna be staying in large cities uh, like Tokyo, Osaka, for example, uh, they do have cards, which are uh, touchless cards, which you can basically go through the uh, turnstile to get into the station uh, where you can board the trains instead of using a paper ticket, which is pretty old fashioned. So in Tokyo, you can use the Pasmo, the Suika, Ikoka, are three of the different cards that you can use to get in and out of the stations. The, uh, those touchless cards do save a lot of time. You don't have to worry about standing in line to get your ticket or looking at that giant map, which you probably can't read, or if you can't read it, it might feel overwhelming. I guess that'll go ahead and move us into our next tip, which is to use Google Maps. So Google, Google Maps is relatively accurate in terms of the uh, timing of the trains and getting you to where you wanna go. You gotta keep in mind though, it may not know that you have a rail pass and keep you on just JR only lines. I don't think it has that functionality somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but um, it may have you connect with different private lines to get to wherever it is that you're trying to go. Another thing uh, you need to keep in mind for Google Maps, if you're using that to figure out which trains to take, if you do have to make a connection, some of the stations are really big. Uh, Shinjuku, for example, is a very big station. Tokyo is a very big station. Uh, Osaka is a very big station. And uh, you may need a little bit of time to get off your train and find wherever it is that you need to go for your next train. They're not necessarily right next to each other or across the tracks. So the other thing that you might want to keep in mind is that trains and buses uh, generally run on time, like literally right on time. If it's going to leave at 8 o'clock, it's going to leave at 8 o'clock. So the other thing that I wanted to mention about taking the trains in Japan is that the station maps uh, can be found all over the station. Usually there's one uh, right outside the uh, turnstile. So the kaisatsu is what it's called in Japanese. Kaisatsu is where the, uh, the uh, turnstile is. There's also one on the train tracks, so you can find one there, as well as outside of the station. So those are three areas if you need to look for a map, um, you get lost. They usually have some English. They usually have some English on those maps, so you can figure out where it is that you're trying to go. If not, you can always ask the uh, station person, the eki san whoever it is that's in the uh, kaisatsu box. Usually there's a glass window with somebody there, an attendant, station attendant, that you can ask. It never hurts to ask if you're completely lost, or you can try to ask one of the locals. The next thing that I wanted to mention is that stations always have stairs, but you know what they don't always have? Escalators and elevators, especially if it's a really small station. If you're going out to the suburbs, for example, and you're traveling with a lot of luggage, you might want to keep that in mind because it can be a real pain 
especially if you're not able to carry your heavy luggage, you might need help taking it up the stairs, which if you're traveling with a bunch of luggage, that might be, uh, that might require a few, tri a few trips. So keep that in mind. Again, you can refer to the uh, subway or the train map to see where it is that the elevator is on that platform if there is one. Otherwise, you're just going to have to lug it up the stairs. And the other thing that I wanted to mention related to luggage is that uh, a lot of the stations do have coin lockers, coin nokka, uh, which are places for you to store your luggage. Usually it's for about 24 hours is the period that um, you can get away with for one payment. Uh, if it's beyond that, you might have to, to repay to get your luggage out. Um, but basically you put your coins into a locker and then once you put your luggage in there, you can, you can take that key and then uh, when you need to get your luggage back out, all you have to do is put in the key and open the door. So there's different sizes, so if you have really large luggage, you might have to look for a large luggage locker. Um, but generally, you know, things like handbags and backpacks, those can be stuffed into coin lockers that are uh, readily found. The bigger ones might be a little bit harder to come by, especially in the busy stations, but um, always convenient, especially if you are checking out of your hotel or your Airbnb and it's your last day and you go to the airport or you're going to go to a different city. Uh, something to keep in mind. So those are eight of my tips for taking the train in Japan. I hope you found them helpful for your next trip or your visit over there. Uh, if you have anything that I missed, any suggestions, any questions, let me know in the comments below. Uh, and if you want to see these written up, check out the blog post linked in the description below and I might have maybe one more tip for you as well. So give me a thumbs up if you like this video, leave me a comment below, subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this one. And other than that, I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.